welcome you to join us here today as we're looking at the epistle of James. We've now just spent the last few months in the epistles of Paul and what a mighty apostle we learned that Paul was, what great things he taught concerning Jesus Christ and the gospel. Now I get a chance to see James's response back to Paul. We've seen Paul being attacked by James in the in his epistles. Uh, we saw that he would go out on these you know missionary journeys. He'd go preach in this city and that city. He would teach them you don't have to keep the law of Moses. You have to keep the Ten Commandments, but you don't have to keep the law of Moses. James would send out his guys, his apostles, and and uh, his seventy and so forth to go tell the same congregation. Once Paul left, that uh, Paul's a, man, a lying man. He's a man of lies. That that they do have to keep the law of Moses. He had issued the um, uh, the the decree in uh, Acts fifteen in the Jerusalem Council, uh, which he said he felt the Holy Ghost tell him that. Gentiles could join the church as long as they did a few things, uh, abstain from fornication and from eating things strangled and from blood. Uh, but then that seems to be, and that they did not have to keep the law of Moses, uh, though he issued that as a decree. Uh, he then starts to have second thoughts about it, as is clear in Paul's letters, to the point that now James is still saying you have to keep the law of Moses. And we're going to see that here in his epistle with the works, uh, the, the passages, right? So he's very big into keeping the law of Moses. He was so good at keeping the law of Moses, he was recognized not only by the early Christians in Jerusalem, but by the Jewish people, the, the non-Christian Jewish people in Jerusalem as well, for and that's how he gained the, the nickname of James the Just or James the Righteous based on how well he was keeping the law of Moses. He ends up becoming an opposition high priest. He could he kept entering the, as a result, he could go enter the temple. And he kept praying for the people, not only for the Christian community, of which he was the president of, but also for the Jewish uh, people as well, to the point that the early church fathers said his his uh, knees became uh, like those of a camel because of all the hours he spent on his knees in the temple as God's high priest, presiding high priest, praying for the people. He was so well uh, uh, known for his uh, uh, keeping the law of Moses that even the Jewish historian Josephus says that the reason why God allowed the Romans to come in and destroy the temple and destroy Jerusalem was because they killed James the just, James the righteous, James the brother of Jesus. Now, um, furthermore, uh, it's very important when trying to get back to the historical Jesus uh, that, uh, you know, again, the, the epistle of James becomes very important. We're trying to understand who, what did Jesus really say, what did Jesus really do, these sort of ideas. Because here you have James, the actual brother of Jesus Christ, through the mother, through the uh, the, through Mary. Uh, God was the father of Jesus Christ. Joseph was the father of James and Jude and Simon um, and, and the sisters and the other brother as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, James, you got to think about it. James grew up. Would you know between a year and a half to two years of Jesus in age for 30 years he spent daily with Jesus? Nobody knew Jesus as well as did James, his brother, and, and Jude, his brother, who also is an apostle and become the third president of the church after the second brother, Simon, uh, becomes uh, the president of the church. All three serve as apostles. Uh, Joseph uh, does not serve as an apostle. Perhaps he was left in charge of the carpentry business that they had in, you know, in Galilee. Uh, but the three apostles all becoming president of the church, James the first, uh, uh, the second the leader of the church, Simon, and the third one, Jude, he becomes president in his 90s. Okay, so 
these three knew Jesus better than anybody. They grew up with him. They dealt with him day by day, all the way from Jesus being a youth all, all the way up. So by studying the book of James, you're going to be heavily influenced by Jesus, right? And what did Jesus say and teach? Uh, you know, James, by example and by uh, verbal teaching. So it's a very important book, getting back to the historical Jesus. 